Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Pinodons playthrough. Fantastic Mr. Ghost here. And here's our next project. Kelmajulin. Yes, I looked it up. There is a J sound in this particular part here, and there is no J. That annoys me about the English language, how they just put letters in there that aren't there, but you pronounce it like they are. Drives me nuts. But anyway, it's called Kelmajulin. So we're going to work on that today. But first, last episode. All I had time for was the aerogel industry. Yes, this sucker is an industry, I tell you. We got methane on the network. And, well, let me just say it's a steam eater methane. But, hey, it's there and we've got it. So now all these little satellite builds that I've been doing, you know, for green circuits, you know, the substrate and all this other stuff. Now I can draw from here. In a sense, what it does is simplifies the builds. And I like that. Same thing with the formaldehyde. Now I can draw from here. And having melamine resin on the network is nice too because now I can build windmills without a problem. I used to just kind of shuffle it around, you know, hand ferry it, you know, drive the train over, grab some from the green circuit build and come back and I would build the windmills. I don't do it every day, so it doesn't bother me, but it's nice to have things automated, you know, factorial, automation. And then the ever so slow aerogel. Yes, we got it. And oh boy, sodium hydroxide. It keeps coming up. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. So yeah, last episode, you know, <laughs> sodium hydroxide. Well, I've been working on this. Uh, I kind of took some time and uh, here it is. This is where I was working on the sodium hydroxide and also the mining fluid too. So I'm faffing about over here. Eh, you know, sometimes I'll be bored. I don't want to start anything crazy. And I'm working on the belts here, trying to get it all belted up. So this recipe here is using the coke plus limestone to slack lime to sodium hydroxide. What's kind of interesting about this is the sodium hydroxide part, the chem plants kick out a little bit of limestone. So you have to feed that back and prioritize it, which is right here. Now I started this build here too, where I'm using the mining fluid too to mine for saline water. And the primary focus is the hydrogen chloride. This electrolyzer will kick out sodium hydroxide as well. And I've been primarily relying on this recipe here and it's not cutting it. So it makes sense to do the hydrogen chloride alongside the sodium hydroxide because we do get a kick out of the sodium hydroxide. And I wanna prioritize the sodium hydroxide from this build first, and that's easy to do. So I'll be working on this off screen and I'll show you what I got. The next project is gonna be Coke. <laughs> Remember this mess? Well, I've been working with Helmod and fighting with it to get a Coke build. And I also want to get the wax kind of moving along here. So we're going to be using the apiaries, filling combs, and getting used combs from the bitumen. And that way I can start building up on wax because, you know, eventually we're going to have to start doing the advanced casting and reworking the entire smelting concept that I have. We're getting away from doing one-stop shop builds. So the iron will be molten and trained or piped so that, you know, I can focus the builds. And then we do casting with the advanced casting and that will be a different area, you know, but close by. So I'm collecting materials and doing all that here. So once I get the sodium hydroxide done, I'll start working on this. And I'm looking forward to it. It's a pretty confusing build, but I think I might have it. All right, let's talk about the filtration media. You'll notice that I have two machines set for filtration media here. Oh, what's that? Do you see a sub denier machine too? Yep, that's right. I got the filtration media in. It's kind of spaghettified, but it's not too bad. I cleaned it up as best I could. Now, I'm gonna rebuild this whole thing just like I am. Uh, there's another build I'm gonna redo. Uh, it's on the docket. Uh, I can't remember which one. But I want to separate the activated carbon from this build as well as the microfiber. And then the filtration media will get its own area as well. It makes it easier to upgrade and maybe add capacity. So if you have a build that does one specific thing, you copy and paste it. Just got to make sure you can feed it. More sodium hydroxide. Yep. So we need the cellulose for this recipe down here. I belted it all the way down. And what happens with the sub denier here? is the microfiber is used in this uh, machine for the for the sub denier. The filtration media no longer needs it. It has the cellulose. 
and also it removes the glass component. So there's some shuffling around. That's why I'm going to rebuild this thing because it's just a mess. Now, what's amazing about the sub denier part is you need three to make 100 filtration, as we know, and that's only three aerogel. So that it, it when you when you put it in perspective, wow, that's not too bad. So the filtration should be um, a breeze now. Oh, what's this? Acrolein? Well, let's take a look at that. Well, acrolein can't be done without this dreaded glycerol. I've been not liking this recipe at all, but I'm liking it now because I have it up and running. Glycerol is a skin and steam eater. This thing is terrible, but you don't need a lot of it. So that's a good thing. And after running the aerogel and the filtration media and letting this beef up here, you know, or build up, um, I found out that, oh, this isn't actually too bad. The acrolein isn't too bad. This built up really fast. It's the glycerol that took a while. The issue is the skin. Let's talk about skin. Well, remember I said Coralexes aren't used for anything? Well, that changed. Well, it turns out the Coralexes are the next best thing for skin. The zipper is the best, but zippers are best used for the arthropod blood. I'm not going to render zippers for skin and then vent that stuff. We need it. So yeah, Coralex is five skin. Now you got to be careful here. Cotton guts. I didn't see this. You know, I kind of looked past it. Five cotton guts are needed for four skin. So you're thinking if you don't see that five X, sometimes it, you look by things, you know, and you know, you're looking at things quick. Oh, wow. Four skin. Wow. Cool. Well, no, it's less than one skin. And the same thing for the fish. It's eight for three. So you got to be careful with the rendering. This is just the skin one here. So yeah, if you're looking for other body parts, just be careful to look at the number because I didn't do that one time. And I was rendering cotton guts to try. I think I was trying to get lard. So I thought, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was lard. And I'm like, wow, five lard for one lousy cotton gut. Oh, cool. Oh no, it's one lard for one cotton gut. So that's why augs are better because you know you get more lard from an aug and then you get the bones too. Now, remember I said I don't like blueprints because then it forces me to rebuild things and you come up with better designs sometimes. You know, it's not always true, but in this case, I did. So what I'm doing here is I'm filtering here the cages to the left-hand side and everything else goes to the right. And now I have a filter uh, splitter here, which filters for skin. I set the skin, you know, I cap the chest here. And what it does is it stops the whole system now. So instead of having to use circuit network, I use the belts and it works really good. I really like that. I love this feature. I just love it. It makes me want to use belts more. That's why I don't use bots anymore. I love using belts because we can do so much stuff with them. Now, before I did the Coralex rendering, I was running the augs to get the skin because I wanted to get the glycerol capped off. And then I can see how things run as they are not building up. And let me tell you, this thing is massively overbuilt. And it's a good thing, too. Now, I had a lot of buffers on this. I had a lot of augs and aug pups. So what I did is I rendered until they were all gone. Because I wanted to see how this thing runs. And all these slaughterhouses here, all the body parts equated to about a red belt. Which is insane. That being said, only one breeder, or the reproductive complex, was running. And only one and barely two of the paddocks were running. You want to talk about cranking out some body parts, boy, this thing can do it. So one of two things can happen here. One, I add more slaughterhouses, but then I got to feed this thing, you know, with that much stuff to get all those running, or I can slim the build down. But what I'm going to do is keep this as is, and as, you know, the base grows, this can stay here. Because we're going to need bones for other things. You know, other things are going to scale up. So there's no reason to go backwards even more. Let's just leave it. All right, over here by the biomass build, uh, well, the body parts collection area, I added more kykalks, and I'm testing this now with this, uh, I think it's, what, six? So what the plan here is, I'm going to monitor this. I'm pretty sure it's good to go. I'm going to take these two wood things out in the wood stop here, and then uh, I'll probably run this out, you know, and just pull the stop up and run this uh, wood out of here so I don't have to deal with it. I'll move this thing over 
a little bit so I can belt four belts straight down into the case here. So I have two mini loaders here. This can crank out some biomass with the Kykelx. So, uh, you know, four belts straight down. And then what I'm going to do is use a green wire uh, on the belt right up close because, you know, I'm using red wire for the LTN stuff. So I'll shut the biomass off right here instead. So this will work out pretty good. Now, I have another Kykelk build to show you. But this Kykelk build is feeding the coal briquettes. Yes, I finally built it. And here it is. Look at that. Glycerol. And 2,000 coal briquettes. I'm very excited to have this up and running. Now, I did a max rate calculator on it. It's a little underbuilt on the Kykelks, but that's okay. I think what's going on is it's factoring in three pressure furnaces, really only two run. So I overbuilt it a little bit because I want to make sure that, you know, I got plenty of coal dust here. So, yes, Kykelks. You, I think uh, you can do ash. There, well, there might be a better recipe for ash. I, I think the fiber, the raw fiber is for ash. So Kykelks are really versatile. Ash, coal dust, obviously biomass. So yeah, these things are really amazing. And the simple recipe makes it even better. Now, when I was monitoring the spin up on this, literally only one train came by that I noticed. And I got over 2,000 coal briquettes from less than 5,000 glycerol. That is amazing. Now, remember, this is 60,000 megajoules. It packed in this little brick. So I'm testing it here at Iron Plate because you're not playing Factorio if you're not consuming a ton of Iron Plate. And here it is. So I'm going to monitor the glycerol and all that good stuff going on with these coal briquettes. And slowly but surely, I'm going to convert all of the oxygen furnaces over to the coal briquettes. Now, why am I doing coal briquettes? Because the charcoal briquette, I think it's called, is nuts. And I need to do a lot more prep for that. So I'm going to go with this for now. And I, what I did is I ripped out the, I had a iron oxide coming in here. And that was because I had no solution for it except make it into iron plate. Well, now we're consuming this stuff in the uh, etching solution process. And also the uh, red circuits are using it for the toroidal inductor. So I am actually having to produce iron oxide because I was running out from the byproducts that I have. So now I am capturing the tailings here. I finally got around to doing that. So I'm really happy because, boy, let me tell you, there's a lot of tailings to be gotten from the iron. You know, as we, uh, you know, as I said, the, if you're not playing Factory, if you're not consuming a ton of iron. So having this extra tailings will help out with the tailings dust, which is converted into acid gas. And we need the tailings for the empty combs. All right, so that about covers what I did off screen now. So let's get to work on this thing.
And there we go! I got the 10. So I'm gonna make that freaking creature, man. Oh boy. This was uh, kind of fun. And yeah. <laughs> I uh, decided to do all three substrates. And I like doing the chain, you know, the chaining here. I guess you could say the, the carrying the belt over. So, you know, it just makes sense to do the one substrate, offer it to the network, the next substrate, offer it, next substrate, offer it. Now, these are expandable this way. You know, I, I can move stuff around, you know, do that. But the main crux of it is that the machines are, you know, you're able to go this way. And then I can underground and do the splitters and stuff. So I've got plenty of room. Uh, spreading out, obviously, you know, I said this way back in episode, I don't know when, 10 or 12 or whatever. Uh, you need a lot of room in Pyanodons because things get out of control. You start adding stuff over time, you know. So, yeah, each one of these is a unique, uh, has a unique recipe, too. Like, this one only has logs. Biomass is really big. Biomass, ash, and the wood. So... I remembered that, and I put the a case here, so I ha I can have a um, very large request, you know, amount here. And then these are the onesies, twosies, you know, the bits and bobs. Tufra is in here. I didn't realize that. I'm like, oh, Tufra. So I'm glad I got that build, the new one. Oh, speaking of Tufra, I forgot to mention that is the one that I wanted to put in the farming block over here. So I'm going to do a two for a two for seeds build here. And you know what's great? Is I got the uh, the manure bacteria already here. And I put the two for here. And I built the two for after or before I did the farming block there. So I don't know where that two for is. Is it here? No. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I was thinking I should move that over there. There's a couple others that probably I could find to move over. So now I've got the, is it the special? What is this stuff called? The special fungal. Now these are really fast. It's just, you know, a matter of feeding it and all that. And I'm using red belt because of the long distance this all has to travel, you know, so I don't mind. I'd rather have it fast. I got the red belt, I'm gonna use it. Now, this sucker here, oh my God, this thing. So what do we got? 9,700 of the, uh, the plutonium 239 yeah now these fuel rods the the limiting factor is as you can see right here is the iron niobium alloy now this goes to the project that i have which you know some hopefully soon after the arcwood mko2s are done i'm gonna start doing the smelting stuff but i gotta do the sodium hydroxide and coke you know that's coming up but yeah redoing all the smelting and I need the molten versions of everything, right? And there's a better recipe for this. I'm using the plate to plate to plate. And it's very inefficient. It sucks up the iron plate. So I can't even, I can't supply the iron plate quick enough to this. Now, once the spin up is done, you know, it'll be over. You know, I won't have to worry about it. So we got our Bodo spores here and Bodos, look at that. Five, it creates five. Now, look at the fuel rod. I, I'm kind of, I don't know why it's 75 megajoules. Why, why isn't it higher? But it is ready to burn. I would think it'd be like 100 or something like that, but yeah, whatever. But it burns pretty quick. I love this. Look at this thing. And it's cool how they put the insects on top because that's what, I think that insects cross-pollinate. You know, they pollinate other flowers and that's how the uh, flowers breed, you know, is because actually the insects, well, wind is a part of it too, but... The insects are the ones that carry the spores around so that the flowers and plants can do its thing. Bees are very important, man. Oh, and then I'm bringing the biomass and the fungal substrate over here. I think it's the it's the pink one here. Now, it's a long belt, but I wasn't thinking about doing this. Uh, so I'm like, well, I might as well belt it over. And, you know, it's just, you know, I'm not worried about this stuff. It's not expensive. So why is it? Oh, uh, this is the improved, yeah. And this is the special, is it? Yeah, special. It's special. So I did a little side load over here, taken out of the case, side loading. I brought the biomass up over underground here, and uh, it's all done 
So if I have to expand this, which I most likely will, I'll rework it a little bit, you know. Gotta start somewhere, you know. All right. And let's see. Oh, and then, yeah, the fuel rod itself. Uh, the lead, yeah, the lead ant, or the iron niobium is the bottleneck on that one. So I'm collecting the bodos here because we're going to need them for the giraffe, the fog knots. And I definitely want to, you know, play around with them. But that's why I'm a little worried about this. So I most likely will do a separate bodos build. And I got to look at uh, FNEI and see what other stuff it's used in because I might do an internal build on the bodos. So I'll take a look at that later. I'm not worried about it right now. What I am happy about is getting this finally done. And, wow, it's taking a while. Oh, you know why? Because it's filling the case up here. Um, I could cut the belt off just to get this buffered up. But uh, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Uh, I think, you know what I'm going to do? I'll put priority. There we go. Let's do that so that spins up quicker. I'll put these in here. And that there, and that. Oh, no, 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 darn it. Ah, I clicked the wrong button. That annoys me. Oh, I probably lost a fuel rod. Maybe not. No, I don't think I did. I think the fuel rods will stay in there. I could be wrong. I don't know. I have to look at the footage. <laughs> Son of a gun. Anyway, yeah, I want these going here. So I want this done. Oh, I have to run over. Oh, I forgot to red wire the pineal gland. I think it's called the pineal gland here. Yeah, Pino, Pino gland. I'll have to look at that. Um, I I have two cases separate. Scondrixes are separate from the pineal gland, and I forgot to red wire it so it wasn't um, connected to the LT incometer. So I did it from map view, and then I screwed up, and I forgot. Oh, it's a limited, you know, limited the case. So it, I had the cases completely open, <laughs> so I had to quickly fix that from bit, and I did it from map view, which is nice. Let's do this right now. 2,000. Oh, but first, I got to run down and do something. Oh, let's go down to the science place. All right. Wow, I haven't run science in a long time. It's just this once. I want to finish everything with the Arcwood MKO2s before I do the rest of the research that I have. I've got a bunch of technology upgrades. And the reason I'm not picking those is because I'm not sure what I want to do yet. So, and I know that some are helpful. But the way it's been is if you choose a technology upgrade, it forces you to use that through the whole base. And I'm like, well, I might want to use the lower recipes. I may not I may not want to use the other ones. So I have to check that and see if they've changed it. And the moss is one of them where if you pick the moss, the better moss one, you have to use, I think it's uh, chlorine. You have to use it. You have to. You can't use the, you know, a small, you know, let's say you just need a little moss for a build or whatever and you want to throw it in. You can't do it. You need to do all this crazy stuff, and I don't like that. I like to have the other recipes available. So I have this combinator here, and it is, let's see, off. Oh, why is that? So the, if it, oh yeah. So if the space science pack signal is zero, then the vet brain cartridge MK01, and I know it's uh, Mark 1, the, uh, this one's off. Now, the problem is the VAT brain, this thing, it the biocomputer, it will always run constantly. And another thing I, I don't like about this is it doesn't tell you what area or what it's touching. So it, you have to kind of, you put it down, and this is going way back. Then you have to check, see how it says, uh, the, there's no productivity. It's just research speed 2.4, which is through research. Now, once you turn this on, then you have to, well, once this is running with the, with the cartridges, the productivity will show up and this doesn't know when to stop. It has no link to, yeah, you're doing research or you're not. So you have to manually set this up. I think, I don't know what the heck, why, why? Um, it's kind of tricky. I guess there's no, maybe there's no API to test if research is running or not. So this can't be stopped via that. So anyway, well, let's start the research. Kaboom. Kaboom. And then it's going to say bow to me. <laughs> 
Now look. Yeah. Productive productivity twenty five percent. Ooh, did they buff that? Maybe not. Oh, it's uh, 25, 50, 7,500, I think. So there we go. Now we are researching them out. Stage two. Cool. Oh, wow. Guts is coming already? Holy cripes. What do I have this set to? 300, 100, 100, 100. Well, okay. Oh, and then, yeah, silver was giving me a problem and the brains. Now, I didn't showcase that with the brains down over here at the body parts area. I cut in. This is LTN Network ID 2 and provide thresholds 1,500. I wanted to come here and get all the brains, you know. So what I did is I have a priority uh, splitter, and it's this is for everything in the base. And this one is for the science only. And the problem was, if you, if you don't have this case here on network ID 1, and this case on 2, it'll, the research uh, part will take these brains, and it won't take these. So you run out of production brains, you know. So this is production, and this is for science only. So if this runs out, oh well, no more right? So at least I get 25% until I run out of brains. Now, there are later things you can do to get brains consistently through the bioengineering, but not right now. So later on, you know, hopefully I can run the vat brain consistently. The only annoyance is that you've got to turn it off physically in order to keep it from consuming everything and there's nothing left. So it kind of sucks. All right, 1%. So I think I'm going to end it here. We got the fi uh, component finally for the arcwids. And we're down to the last two components. But this one here, I don't know what's involved. I, I think this takes all three, I want to say. But we did, we got the Shamirin, I think. And that's uh, chemical processing here. So I'll kind of break this out, see how I'm going to handle it for the next episode. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.